Paper has many unique qualities that make it a very versatile resource. Made from wood pulp, the main component of paper is cellulose fibers. The lengths and orientation of these fibers, in conjunction with the presence of other components, is what gives the various physical properties of paper. The robustness of these fibers is also what allows paper to have such versatility and allows for very efficient recycling. Due to this unique structure, the average piece of paper can re be recycled up to five times. Many local councils run recycling schemes and these on all accounts are very successful at recycling household waste paper. However, in terms of industrial waste, New Zealand does not have the facilities needed to, to recycle large quantities of industrial waste paper. As a result, New Zealand spent $46 million exporting waste paper to other countries such as China, Indonesia and Vietnam last year. With heightened international tensions and the constant threat of trade wars, being reliant on other countries to handle our waste is not an effective waste management strategy. Notwithstanding the success of local paper recycling schemes, there are still some challenges we face. There are high levels of contamination of non-recyclable materials within our recycling systems, and these prove to be incredibly difficult and costly to, to, to sort out, particularly in terms of time and money. The paper recycling method, while being very efficient, involves lots of harmful chemicals, such as alkyl phenols and polychlorinated biphenols, both of which are persistent in the environment and are toxic to many organisms. We need to rethink our recycling strategy, as our current system is not ideal. We need to start repurposing our paper. I mentioned before that paper can have a myriad of different properties. It can be dense, absorbent, made from natural materials, it can have a natural elasticity, it can be strong, it can be porous. We can reuse paper in ways that make use of these various properties. The natural elasticity of paper can be repurposed for use in packaging as a way to protect shipped goods. Already we see many businesses moving away from traditional packing materials such as styrofoam because of the significant environmental impact that they have. Reusing paper in packaging is an effective and efficient way of reducing our consumption of packaging plastics. A slightly abstract but certainly useful application of paper is in the production of crash barriers for roads. Paper has a density of about half, of half the density of concrete, and this is sufficient enough to slow down a car. Car barriers, such as the Jersey barrier, are designed to slow down and redirect cars, not to stop them completely. Therefore, paper is a cheaper and more eco-friendly alternative than concrete, whose production emits large amounts of carbon dioxide. By creating a range of sustainable barriers, New Zealand can address problems on its roads, such as high death tolls. Another great use for paper is in the underlay for houses. Wall underlay sits between the outer cladding and the insulation of a house, and is integral in ensuring that water droplets cannot penetrate into the insulation and timber framing of the house, while still allowing water vapour to escape from the insulation. Paper can be porous to vapour or gas, while still providing a physical barrier to water droplets, and therefore is an ideal choice as the base for wall underlay. Paper underlay is a sustainable alternative, and its widespread use would lead to, so lead to greatly improving the quality of housing stock in New Zealand. We can make use of paper's natural origins and decompose paper into eco-friendly compost or mulch. Paper, made from natural cellulose, can be easily broken down. The inks used in paper nowadays, particularly in newspapers, are derived from natural sources, such as soybeans, so there'd be no adverse effects on plants or animals. Not only could this be used in home gardens, but it could also be scaled up for large, for large industrial quantities at an industrial scale for many farming operations. The relative cheapness of this method would be a major upside for many farmers. There is one final step on the life cycle of paper. We can burn it. Despite what many say, this is actually a beneficial process. The energy released from the burning of the paper can, can be used to generate electricity. And while the burning of paper does release carbon dioxide, the overall process is actually a carbon neutral process. The, the carbon dioxide that's been released was originally taken in by the trees, so there is no net carbon emissions. This is pertinent for us as a country and as the world as we move towards a carbon neutral economy by 2050. This form of electricity generation could replace some of our current electricity generation methods, such as burning fossil fuels. 
we can use different repurposing methods to create a paper life cycle, a flow of paper from one use to another. Furthermore, products of paper repurposing can be specifically targeted for the New Zealand market. We no longer would have to ship our rubbish overseas at high costs. And the paper repurposing initiatives created here in New Zealand will provide local employment opportunities across the country. Don't get me wrong though, recycling paper is still a worthwhile endeavour. However, without significant investment in our recycling infrastructure, paper recycling at a large industrial scale here in New Zealand will not be as effective as it can be. By repurposing and rethinking our paper, New Zealand can be innovative and independent on a global scale with significant upside to our economy, our environment and society as a whole. Thank you.